Hello, welcome back, and today I want to talk about the Terramaster NAS. It's a brand that we've talked about on the channel quite a few times, and I do want to talk about it more, because they are definitely one of those brands that is evolving. Now, people out there, of course, you've heard of Synology and QNAP, and then you've got WD and Acer Store, and then some of you have heard of Thecus. Uh, other little brands, Zixel, D-Link, these are tiny little brands, and in that little tiny paddock at the bottom is the brand Terramaster. But the reason we focused on Terramaster on this channel and of course the other YouTube channel all this time is largely because I don't know of another NAS brand that has evolved and changed and you know and kind of grown with the speed and veracity of Terramaster. Now, when they when we first looked at their products a couple of years ago, we noticed that they really you know, I think it was this NAS over here, it was the F2. And it really was basic. Not only did it look pretty grim, let's look at it, that's, I'll be honest, that chassis is not that appealing. Uh, and on, on the back of it, it had basic level features, it had just USB 2 there on the rear, it had LEDs there on the front, and the software that it arrived with, <coughs> TOS, was still very much in its preliminary stages and not that good at all. Now, that was, again, as I say, about two years ago, and in that time, not only has the TOS software exploded, in its uh, diversity, the application support and utility, and it's a much more fluid interface. But on top of that, so has the hardware being used in these devices. I mean, the old device there had a really poor Marvel Elmada single core chip, I believe. This has got a dual core Intel, it's one of the J series chips, it's probably down the bottom of the screen. And it arrives with that dual core chip, 2.4 um, gigahertz, I believe, that can be boosted up to 2.5, there or thereabouts. And on top of that, it arrives with 2 gig of DDR3 memory that can be upgraded, they say, to 4 gig, but given it's one slot, pretty sure you could go up to 8. Um, and again, we might try that on another video. Now, we're going to be doing full overviews of setting this device up the first time, um, the software overview of the user interface itself, TOS 3.1, and maybe one more video focusing on those individual apps like Plex, um, cloud management backups, um, general file management, photos, video, multimedia, and more. So do check out those videos when they're released. But for now, in order to do those videos, we're going to have to get this out of the box. So once again, this is the Terramaster F4220. It's available um, at the moment on Amazon, of all places, uh, for around about uh, £299. And that's inclusive of that. Um, and I believe as well in the in the US it's even cheaper. I think it's about two hundred and eighty dollars, uh, and that's for a four bay NAS, which is pretty impressive. Um, inside we've got our box of tricks, and inside our box of tricks here we have an external PSU again, pretty standard for a four bay. We have an RJ forty five cat cable. We have a, a EU mains lead, and again, this has come over from Germany. So again, if you order in the UK or the US or whatever, you will get your regional plugs if you purchase in your own region. Do go to the link at the bottom to the NAS Compare article where we fully broken down all this stuff. Um, next, we have a screwdriver, which is quite weird. I've never seen a NAS arrive with a screwdriver, and part of me is impressed, and then I think, eh, strange thing to include, but still nevertheless, Nice crosshead screwdriver there, presumably for the hard drives and the SSDs. Um, we have labels here, strangely, that people can attach to multiple hard drives because this is a hot swappable NAS, it's got removable trays. So the idea you'd have multiple drives that you want to label isn't, you know, too shabby, uh, shabby, shabby, shabby an idea. Um, on top of that, we have more labels there for a different kind of uh, hard drive, I imagine, for bay one or two. Rubberized feet. Screws for SSDs screws for hard drives. Uh, the Let's have a look at this. This is uh, setting up your cloud account, so just like all NAS brands. This has um, a cloud-based access where you can use your network if you wish, or access it anywhere on the internet, utilizing uh, a domain that has basically the name of your NAS, which we'll probably call this NAS Compares or Span or something, at terramaster.com, and then that becomes your web domain to access this NAS anywhere in the world with login credentials. Um, an FAQ and guide to set up, warranty information, and that's your lot. That's quite a lot of accessories, to be honest, for a, um, a cost-effective NAS. And I say cost-effective at this time for a 4-bay feature and dual-core um, Intel chip and the capabilities. I think there isn't actually a NAS for that hardware lower priced than this device at the moment. You'll never find a Synology or indeed a QNAP at that price level. Let's leave that over there. Take a look at the, this bad boy itself. Um, I've only really seen this in pictures. I've never really had a chance to get my hand on this 4-bay model. Um, 
Very similar chassis to the five bay, that quad core Intel that uses the J series. Um, but there you are, that's the device. Now once again, it's a four bay now, so all of these are hot droppable. We've got multiple LEDs there on the front for drive system health, network access and more. And a power button. No USB front mounted one touch copy. A little disappointing to be honest. It's a very tiny feature and people really love it. And I'm really surprised sometimes that NAS vendors skip this step. I mean, I don't know what it would cost in production in terms of chassis and the buttons and getting that sorted on the motherboard. But still, one touch USB copy to me seems like a standard thing people should have these days. Um, if we open up, the trays are plastic unfortunately, but they're a lot better than the trays inside that previous device. I should really have uh, used that as a basic comparison. Let's have a quick look at that, shall we? So I think it's only right that we compare this fairly. How much things have changed. If I'm gonna talk about evolution, we should really look about how much these things have evolved. And those are the trays on the original one. Plastic, bendable. I'd have to put very little pressure on breaking that. In fact, I nearly already broke that. So again, this is a much older model and they've really changed and upped their game between these two trays. Again, that one, a lot more rugged. We've got screw holes for SSDs and hard drives. I'm sorry if that noise hit the mics there. Pop that back in. I think I may have damaged that irreparably. Let's pop that over there. We might have to come back to that later. But again, the trays themselves means that you can hot swap drives within this device as needed. Um, the chassis itself, is metal but with plastic on the bottom and loads of ventilation for those hard drives there on the bottom. Rubberized feet too, so you've got some spare feet as well. Um, on the back, we've got two rear mounted fans that can be set to automatic or manual depending on your mood, so they can lower and heighten the temperature and of course you might want to lower it because fans and RPM. Um, I'm definitely going to say this is a pinch noisier than a Synology NAS, but it's about the same sort of noise as a 4 bay QNAP. Um, probably about 19 dBA, but I'm sure the specification sheet is available online. Um, we have a couple of USB ports. We've got a USB 3 port and a USB 2 port. And again, this doesn't have things like HDMI, but it does support um, USB storage, externals, hard drives, and of course, and wireless as well if you use uh, a compatible USB Wi-Fi adapter. But that's really it. You're not going to use these for keyboard and mice and stuff like that because there's no um, visual interface. On the bottom here, we've got that LAN port, a one G um, RJ45, one GBE port, and there's a hollow for a second port, because I believe the um, the quad core version of this has a dual uh, LAN port for link aggregation. And of course, we've got that port there at the bottom for that external power supply. But that really is the device. I mean, let's face it, hardware is just hardware. You wouldn't hear about the software. So I'm gonna get started, get this set up, and film the setup of the device, the device so I can show you exactly how easy it is to set up one of these bad boys. So don't forget to subscribe, visit the blog, visit span.com, and do remember to keep watching these videos to learn more and more about NAS and for the follow-up videos about the TerraMaster F4220. I'll see you next time.